Connor has asked me to say a few words from a historical perspective on understanding the other. Um, and I, I run, as Juice said, um, the Forum on Geopolitics. And one of our projects is uh, a, a venture called Westphalia for the Middle East, which is applying insights gained from peace building and understanding in the 17th century uh, to the present day Middle East. And to illustrate what I mean, let me just tell you very quickly uh, about what early 17th century Germany was like. It was the disaster zone of Europe. It's an area of religious conflict between Catholics and Protestants, intense political conflict between the emperor and the princes, the states. Um, it's an area of huge geopolitical contestation between the Spaniards, Spanish Habsburgs, uh, the French, uh, the Swedes, uh, and so on. And all this culminates in the great war of all against all in the Thirty Years' War, uh, which rages, rages for uh, three decades uh, in Germany. And does any of this sound familiar? <laughs> well, you know, religious conflict. Um, Catholic Protestants, Sunni Shia, of course it's not exclusive or exhaustive. Uh, political rivalries, Saudi Arabia, Iran, geopolitical rivalries, uh, the United States and Russia, for example, uh, in Syria. Um, and of course, uh, Syria is, to my mind, the Germany of the present day. It is the traumatized space, not the only place that's been traumatized, but particularly traumatized uh, over the last few years. So what I, I'm <coughs> suggesting, what we're suggesting, is that the uh, conflict resolution mechanism that was reached in Germany uh, at the Treaty of Westphalia, which establishes or re-establishes common institutions, which is establishes uh, guarantees uh, for minorities, and more importantly, forms of guaranteeing those rights, external guarantors of great powers, uh, institutions, uh, and so on, provides not, as you'll often read, uh, a guarantee for the sovereignty of the state. That's a great myth. In fact, Westphalia is about conditional sovereignty. That's the point. And what we're trying to do in this project is to apply this model to the Middle East. Unless you think this is simply uh, another egghead uh, from Cambridge applying some abstruse, esoteric um, uh, model to, uh, from the past to the present day, of course there's an element of that, um, but uh, it is also a call from the region itself. So if you Google Westphalia from the Middle East, you'll see lots and lots of voices uh, from the Arab world, from Persia and so on, saying we need something like Westphalia uh, to bring all this uh, to an end. Um, and this idea has been picked up uh, by the German Foreign Minister, Frank Walter Steinmeier, who gave a big speech uh, at uh, Osnabrück, one of the cities where Westphalia was signed in 1648, uh, entitled the Westphalian uh, Peace Agreement as a Model for the Middle East. And he and we are, are uh, meeting again in November um, under the auspices of the Kerber Foundation to progress this idea. And we've got many actors also uh, from the region uh, involved, and in a sense, once it's established, of course, it will be passed on to them. So, Cameron's asked me to uh, say two things, or make two points, um, about what I've done, uh, or two suggestions about how, what we could do to reduce suspicion of the other, and arising out of my historical understanding. Uh, two propositions. One is that uh, we need to accept that the absolute security of one side can only be achieved by the absolute insecurity of the other. That's the great discovery, um, I would say, of the 17th century, and that's why you have this model of conditional sovereignty. And the second suggestion is that we may have to accept, uh, at times, that peace and coexistence may require us to set aside, or at least shelve, questions uh, of truth, um, because they, these, of course, uh, are hotly uh, contested. Thank you very much.